Warning! This video contains frank discussion of matters of sexual morality. Just thought you might want to know. Hey! Welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the parts of the old law which remain valid and grave today, the Ten Commandments. So far, we've talked about the first five commandments, and now it's time to tackle the sixth, Thou shalt not commit adultery. This time, divorce. What is it? Is it against the sixth commandment? Again, I'll begin by referring to the definition put forth in the Catechism. It, divorce, claims to break the contract to which the spouses freely consented, to live with each other till death. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 2384, second sentence. To really understand just what divorce is, however, let's compare it to two other things which appear, at first, to be similar, separation and annulment. When a couple separates, this means that they may still be married, they haven't necessarily been divorced, but they no longer live together for various reasons. According to paragraph 2383 of the Catechism, separation is a legitimate moral choice in certain cases. When a couple gets an annulment, this is not the same thing as a divorce. All this means is that the marriage is examined, and it's determined that one or more of the persons involved didn't intend to get married, or else wasn't properly disposed to marriage in some other way. Therefore, it's judged that the marriage didn't happen. This is different from divorce, in which it's recognized that the marriage did happen, and the couple wants it to end. Divorce is a little different from most of the other things we've discussed, because at first glance it seems to violate the Eighth Commandment more than the Sixth. After all, when a couple gets married, they swear to stick by each other till death do them part, and therefore even attempting to get a divorce breaks this promise, thus causing the promise to be a false witness which harms one's neighbor. Furthermore, we have good reasons for thinking that it's impossible for a married couple to become divorced, regardless of what the law says. When a couple engages in the sacrament of marriage, God is personally involved, overseeing and blessing the union, and while the couple may change their mind about it, God never changes his mind about anything. However, while divorce does seem to be a sin against the truth, it's also a betrayal of a marital union into which you've engaged, and in disrupting a marriage, it also disrupts the sexual act, which is an important part of that union and proper to it. Furthermore, divorce acts against one of the principal goods of sex, union with one's spouse, and this is a direct action. Therefore, I think that a good case could be made for divorce being a lustful action, wholly apart from the harm it causes to everyone involved, especially children, if there are any of them. It can single-handedly wreck the life of a child caught in the middle of such a conflict. Jesus, however, seemed to imply that divorce doesn't really change anything in terms of which actions were moral and which were immoral. In Mark 10, 2-12, Jesus said that even if a man divorces his wife, she's still committing adultery if she marries another person, and anyone who marries a divorced woman turns her into an adulterer, exactly as if she were married. Why? There are many possible explanations, but my own theory is this. Divorce isn't real. It's a silly idea that we humans have come up with on our own, but it has no real substance or truth content. This is why nothing about objective morality is altered in any way by divorce. Next time, polygamy. What does it mean? And is it against the Sixth Commandment? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.